Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm about to try to make it just a little bit better by giving you guys an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the G1 Sniper M5. It's based on the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's new fourth generation core processors. Let's start off with a look at the retail box. This is part of the Ultra Durable series from Gigabyte. It's also part of the G1 Killer series of gaming motherboards, so you get a bit from both worlds. Uh, the M5 is uh, the series number, but it's also a micro ATX motherboard, so a bit smaller than your typical ATX motherboard. Uh, it features the 1150 socket, Intel 4th generation core processors, aka Haswell. Uh, bear in mind, a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge socket 1155 CPU will not fit in this motherboard. So you do need the newest 4th gen Haswell processor. Uh, it's also got premium audio on board and they've actually included swappable op amps. So uh, an op amp is actually a little chip. Uh, they've included an extra one here in the box, a little extractor too. Uh, it's kind of like a, an old school guitar amplifier to, to some extent, whereas by swapping out the chip, you can give yourself sort of a different sound profile so you can have a warmer tone or, or, or that sort of thing. And there's lots of those chips that are available. Uh, again, you get one an extra one included with the motherboard and then uh, other ones that are sold separately if you want to uh, try swapping those out to change around your sound configuration. Uh, apart from this, Gigabyte Amp Up Audio is that entire audio solution over there. They're using Nichicon high-end audio capacitors uh, to provide uh, higher quality audio component, or, or audio sound quality, I should say. Uh, and then you also have a sort of a, a cool design with the PCB here uh, where they've provided a separation here from the, with the audio uh, and the rest of the components. And then they've also provided some LED track lighting along there. For networking, you get a killer E2200 uh, NIC, so that's going to provide you also with the killer software that uh, lets you do uh, packet prioritization. You can prioritize your game packets, for example, so they're not going to slow down if you're in an intense gaming session. Two-way graphic support for SLI and Crossfire. Uh, and then you also get uh, black solid caps used throughout the board. Uh, UEFI dual BIOS, so you can switch back and forth between those. Uh, especially helpful if you ever have a power outage during a BIOS update, for example. Uh, gaming headphone amplifier for your front headphones. Uh, also, uh, electrostatic uh, protection for your Ethernet ports. 15 micron gold-plated CPU socket for a better connection uh, between the CPU and the motherboard. Also new heat sink designs, I'll show you those when I get out of the box. They're using uh, International Rectifier IR Digital Power Stage Delivery uh, for the ICs on the board, so those are, you'll see those kind of scattered throughout. You can look for that IR logo. Double copper PCB, that's part of the UD or Ultra Durable 5 series. Uh, you also get some quick buttons on board for power and uh, reset and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you get also uh, display ports uh, on off charging from your USB ports. And uh, that's about it for the outside of the box. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at accessories. Next up, uh, look, they put the accessories on top. Excellent. Okay, I talked already about the swappable op amps. This is the swappable op amp upgrade kit. So they have included uh, this op amp, uh, which is actually listed on the box, but I skipped over it. Which one is it? Okay, this is the LM4562NA. That's the model number of that extra op amp that they've included right there, as well as the uh, extractor, so you can uh, remove the existing chip and replace it with that one and give yourself different sound characteristics. Uh, for serial ATA connectivity, they've provided you with a total of four serial ATA cables. They're all going to be SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so don't worry. They will work with your fast and speedy new SSDs. Uh, and then you also have two with straight plugs on both ends and two with a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angle plug on the other end. And they do have the little metal clasps to help hold them in place. You do get a Gigabyte case badge. You get a Gigabyte I.O. shield that's got the G1 Killer logo on it, and it's got all your I.O.s clearly labeled on there. They have provided you with some documentation. So this is one the G1 Sniper M5 main user's manual. Uh, this has really, really useful information in it, especially if you're a first-time builder or if you're just getting, uh, getting started. You get a uh, block diagram where everything's connected there. You also get a full listing of all the components integrated onto the board. You should always keep that on hand while you're doing your build. Also a multilingual installation guidebook if English is not your first language. That's in black and white. And then you also get the Gigabyte driver and utility disks. Chances are you can download updated versions of these drivers and utilities directly from the Gigabyte website, which I usually recommend rather than loading off the disk. Since this board is two-way uh, SLI compatible, they have provided you with an SLI bridge. It is black and flexible, so you can do different spacing uh, depending on the spacing of your video cards. Uh, if you are interested in Crossfire, those bridges usually come along with your Crossfire video card. 
And now for a closer look at the G1 Sniper M5 motherboard itself. As you can tell, uh, this is going with the black and green color scheme. We also have some uh, silver highlights, such as in the G1 Killer and Ultra Durable uh, kind of shiny parts on the heat sinks. Uh, we also have a black or a matte black PCB. Flip around here to the back to give you guys a closer look. Uh, the cooling elements on the board and heat sinks are mounted with Phillips head spring-loaded screws, so easy enough to remove those if uh, it should become necessary in the future. And I uh, also wanted to point out you get five total fan headers on this board. They're all four-pin PWM capable. Two for the CPU fan up here, so CPU main and CPU optional. Uh, another one right here above the PCI Express, four-pin system fan header, that's three. And then four and five are down here along the bottom edge, uh, a little bit to the left. Uh, a couple more system fan headers for you. Speaking of the bottom edge, let's go ahead and take a close-up look at this board and I will point out to you what is what and how it all works, hopefully. Uh, we'll start down here with the front panel connectors. So you can see they're color-coded in there. Gigabyte also provides you with a little chart below there so you can tell what's what. You can also reference the manual, of course, for a layout of all those pinouts because that tends to be one of the more annoying things of a computer build. Uh, for USB connectivity, you got a couple front USB 2.0 connectors right there. So each of those will support two USB 2.0 ports. Uh, the system fan headers, I already pointed out one there and one there. And then over on the left side, we have uh, the audio componentry for the board. So again, this is a Creative Sound Core 3D chip, which is a quad core audio chip. Front panel audio header is right there. Uh, this supports Sound Blaster Recon 3DI, for example, high definition audio. Uh, this one has 5.1 channel support. Uh, here's also some of the niche, Nichicon caps that they've used for uh, audio delivery. And then there is that removable op amp chip that you can swap out in the future if you want to change the tone of your audio. Uh, next to that, we have PCI Express. So you can see all these ports right here. And uh, they've given you a total of three of these longer green ports. Now bear in mind, if you're going to go with a two-way uh, SLI or Crossfire X configuration, you'll want to use the top port here and the bottom port right here. Top one is uh, wired up fully for uh, uh, X16, so it's going to run at X16 PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, bottom here is going to run at X8 uh, PCI Express Gen 3, of course, as well. And then if you do use two of them in a Crossfire or SLI two-way configuration, they'll run at X8 and X8. You also have another expansion port right here. Uh, this one is also full length, but it's going to be running at X4. Uh, and this one's PCI Express Gen 2. It's uh, routed off of the chipset. Then you got another uh, PCI Express X1 slot right there, also Gen 2, and that one is also running off of the chipset. So that is where your uh, video cards go. I also wanted to point out your two BIOS chips. So you can see them right here, B BIOS and M BIOS. That's main and backup. And there's a LED next to each one, so you can easily, uh, at a glance, uh, see which one you're actually set up to use right at that moment. Assuming there's power to your motherboard, of course. Uh, and to the right of that, we have the G1 Killer logoed heatsink right there. Uh, you can see the G1 Killer skull, which is kind of the hallmark of their, their series of motherboards they've been using for the past few years. Uh, nice fat heatsink for your Z87 chipset right there. And then uh, one of the really, really cool things about Z87 uh, that was introduced just with the newest fourth generation core processors is all six of your native serial ATA ports are now SATA Rev3. That's six gigabits per second. So if you want to max out uh, six SSDs on this, you can, and they're all going to be able to run at full speed. You can get RAID support, so you can do RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10. And uh, yeah, again, all natively controlled by the chipset, so you're going to get really good speed out of all of those ports. Moving on up the board, on the right side right here, uh, we have this red USB 3.0 header. Uh, the red means it is uh, going to provide three times the power of your typical USB 3.0 header for faster charging. It also has on-off charge support. So uh, even if your computer is turned off, as long as you have a uh, power cable going to the power supply and the power supply turned on, you'll still be able to charge. Uh, so that's a great option for front panel, especially if you like to charge uh, you know, tablets or, or phones or that sort of thing. From, the, from your front USB. Uh, to the right of that, you got your main 24-pin motherboard power connector. Right here, you have a debug LED, which I find to be uh, very, very useful, particularly if you're having any problems getting your board set up and running for the first time. You can reference the codes on that LED, double check them in the manual, and uh, give you a much, much better idea of what might be going wrong. Uh, over here on the right side, you get some voltage read points. So this being a gaming motherboard, you might be interested in some overclocking on it. Uh, you can use a multimeter, or uh, if you are really serious, you can do some soldering there to uh, connect those up and get some detailed voltage readings. Uh, you have two switches right here, the little black ones. Uh, the one on the right 
uh, let's see, actually, the one on the left is going to be your BIOS switch. So that will manually switch you between uh, BIOS A and BIOS B. The one on the right is going to switch you between a single BIOS mode and dual BIOS mode. You also have some surface mounted buttons right here. So you got a power button, for example, right there. That will actually light up uh, when there's power going to the board. So it's a nice way to make sure that you have everything hooked up properly. You also have a clear CMOS, a little black button right there. And you also have uh, the blue button, which is a reset button. Uh, surface mounted, mounted as well. So if you're doing an outside the box build or if you're setting this up on a test bed, for example, really handy to have those uh, surface mounted buttons. Uh, DDR3 area is next. That's right here. That's where your memory goes. Uh, you're going to want DDR3 DIMMs. Uh, can support up to 32 gigs total, so that's uh, up to 8, gim, 8 gig DIMM capacity. Uh, Intel officially supports DDR3 speeds up to 1600 on this platform. Uh, you can even go overclock speeds beyond that. Your mileage may vary, of course, as is usually the case with overclocking. Uh, but you will want to buy at least two sticks, which, um, I mean, it's hard to buy a single stick of memory these days. But uh, use them in the paired slots. Reference the manual to make sure you're taking advantage of the dual channel capability. Uh, you also have uh, the CPU fan and optional fan right there at the top that I already mentioned. And then you have your CPU socket right there. Once again, as much as this might look like a 1155 socket, it is not. It is an 1150 socket. It's for Intel's fourth generation core processors and not for Intel's second or third generation core processors. Once again, Haswell processors only, not for Sandy Ridge or Ivy Ridge. Okay. Uh, next to that, around here, you can see the heat sinks for our power delivery. And that's, of course, going to be providing power to the CPU, particularly if you're going to be overclocking. It's really nice to have plenty of cooling on your, uh, on your CPU's power delivery. You can see some of the chokes down here as well as the caps. Heat sinks themselves generally will sit down on the MOSFETs because those are the uh, parts of the power delivery that will get hottest. In the top left up here, you can see your supplemental 8-pin CPU power connector. And then we will finish with some I.O. here at the back. Uh, so for I.O., you have a combo PS2 port right there that can plug in a mouse or a keyboard. So if you've got an expensive older mechanical keyboard with a PS2, don't worry, you're still set up right here. A couple of USB 2.0 ports right there. Uh, here you also have a DVI, uh, a couple HDMI 1.4a outs, as well as a display port out. All these video outputs right here are for the iGPU in your processor, which will be over there. So uh, again, you, will, you can use these uh, if you're not using a discrete graphics card. Um, you can use these with the discrete graphics card. You can use the uh, Lucid Virtue software in order to virtualize your GPU and kind of switch back and forth between them. That will allow you to take advantage of stuff like uh, Intel's QuickSync technology, for example. Another cool thing uh, with the Z87 chipset and the newest series of iGPUs is you can actually support three displays uh, from, from here. So if you're not planning on using a discrete graphics card, you can still get uh, triple monitor support, which is pretty nice to have. As far as resolu resolutions go, uh, the DVI is a single link right here that can do up to 1920 by 1200. The two HDMIs are 1.4a. They can do up to 4096 by 2160 resolution. And then uh, you also have uh, the display port right there. The display port can do max of 3840 by 2160. Uh, also, you got four more uh, USB 3.0 ports right there. I wanted to say all the USB 3.0 ports, these four as well as the uh, two available from that red header on the board, are all natively also controlled by the Z87 chipset. So that's another upgrade from Z87. More native USB 3.0 support. Here is your Atheros. Uh, um, Qualcomm Atheros Killer E2201 chip, uh, so that's your killer NIC, and again, that's also going to be compatible with the killer software uh, for packet prioritization, which is pretty helpful if you do gaming and downloading at the same time, or if you have lots of people on your network. Finally, here you have your gold-plated analog audio connection points for your microphone, as well as your 5.1 channel audio, as well as an optical toss link out. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the G1 Sniper M5 motherboard from Gigabyte, featuring the new Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. If you enjoyed this video, you should maybe hit the like button. It's located right down there to let us know that you enjoyed it. And also subscribe for future tech videos just like this one. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.